So um, this is the beginning of our bone lecture. And so I'm gonna be covering three different pages for you. The first page is going to include the skull, which you can find in 8.1. The second page is going to include basically the um, vertebrae along with the thoracic region of the body. That includes the sternum and the ribs and the clavicle and the scapula and then ending with the pelvis. And then the third page is going to include the rest of the appendicular um, Skeletal, a skeleton, which includes things like the limbs, the arms, and the legs. And so we're going to start here looking at this. Hopefully you can see this okay. And the difference between what is considered actual and appendicular. So the actual skeleton is going to be, of course, the skull and the vertebrae, and then basically the sternum and the ribs. So anything that's connected to the center part that is actually a part or um, become one with it. Now, the appendicular is anything that kind of is external off of that. So if you're looking at the clavicle here, the scapula that's here, these guys come off. You, of course, have the arms, the hip girdle that's here, and then the legs. And so that's the difference between what is considered actual and appendicular. So let's start first here with the skull. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and show you this on here. But in addition to that, um, I'm going to reference different figures that you can look at in your book to help you with this. So essentially, the very first thing we're going to do is look at the different bones that are on the skeleton. And I have a colorized version of it right now just to help. But when you study, you need to study using just a regular plane um, kind of bleached out or white skeleton. So here we're going to start first with what's considered <coughs> the occipital lobe. And so this is the front. And so if you do this into the back here, you'll look at this area that's right here that is all in this kind of reddish brown area. And this is considered the occipital lobe. Now there are two um, parts on here. There are, we're going to look at the occipital condyles, and we're going to point out the foramen magnum. So the occipital condyles are these two kind of really nice smooth areas right here. And the foramen magnum is the big hole that's here. Magnum being big, foramen is talking about the hole. Now, if you want to see this on a picture, you can look at figure 8.5 in your book and it will show you kind of those areas that you can look at. Now the parietal lobe, if you look, again the front, this is the back. Now if you go to the top of it right here, is this yellow region that's here. You can see that on figure 8.4. The frontal lobe, which is this green part that's right here, I keep calling them lobe, I mean bone, frontal bone. And the reason why I keep calling them lobe is when you look at the brain, when we um, hit on that soon, they're called lobes. So frontal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, right? And this one you can see in a couple, you can see in 8.4. You can also see that in 8.3. Parietal, you can see in 8.4. Um, and the temporal, which is on the side, do you see this? kind of um, purple area that's here, that is the temporal bone. And you can see that on 8.4. Now let's get into um, knowing some of the um, intricate details that start in this temporal bone region. So we have what's called the external auditory matus and or metis, and that can be also found in 8.4. All of these can be found in 8.4. And so if you look here, you'll see that opening or hole that's right here. Sorry, guys. That's right here. That is that, and essentially what that is, is we're gonna look at that when we get to the sight and sounds section or senses, and that is where your ear um, canal essentially is. 
Um, the styloid process, I like to think about that in terms of a stylus that you use to either write on things. They were really big probably about 10 or 15 years ago. And do you see on this bottom part here, this little thing that's behind there that looks like something that you could write with, a pokey thing? So that's the styloid process. Now, if you feel behind where the meatus is right here, and there's this kind of area that is, um, you call it, kind of rough. That right there is the mastoid process. And then we're gonna get to the zygomatic. So we have what's known as a zygomatic process, a zygomatic bone, and then the zygomatic arch. So processes are smaller than bones, essentially. So let's look at this blue region that's right here. You can see it comes up. Do you see that right there? So this right here is a zygomatic arch. It's an archway. It's opened, right? And you can see that it's formed out of these two guys, this blue bone here and this part that comes off of the temporal bone here that's purple, right? So the zygomatic bone is the blue part that's on the front. It's this that you see that's right up here, right? Your cheekbone that you essentially see. So this is a zygomatic bone. And then if you go back to here, the smaller of the two, just remember processes those are smaller, is a zygomatic process. And you can see a lot of times because there seems to be kind of like a little line that comes here where they meet. And the whole thing with the zygomatic bone and process together forms the zygomatic arch. Now, this is one way that they can determine gender between um, like bones is that the zygomatic arch is bigger men. So, all of this can be found on 8-4. Now, on 8-4, you can also see the um, coronal suture. So sutures, as we talked about, are these small bones that are between these bigger bones, right? And in an infant, um, you will notice that these essentially um, are where you will notice that there's no bone between them yet because it allows these bigger bones to fold over to get through the birth canal. But once um, we grow up and we are born, these guys ossify to help the um, skull be a very good protective covering but until they're completely ossified you have to be careful so this is where soft spots are kind of in the front and the back and so on here the very first one we're going to look as is a coronal suture and you can think of crown here kind of is where a crown would go across or when they say the crown of the baby's head is coming out coronal is how i remember that and that is the suture that is between the frontal bone and the parietal bone. The lambdoidal suture is back here. You can see that. And the lambdoidal suture is going to be between the occipital bone and the parietal bone. The squamosal suture is going to be this one that is between the parietal bone and the temporal bone. And the one I kind of skipped over and I, I apologize is the sagittal suture and you've already learned what a sagittal plane is. So a sagittal suture is going to be kind of like the mid sagittal plane. It separates the right and left parietal bone. You can find all the sutures for the most part um, on 8.4. They do not show the sagittal suture, but we know the term already, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I don't have in front of me the baby skull, but I can show you a picture of it really quick just so that you know. And so basically the fontanelles are the technical term for the soft spots. So the one that's in the front is what's called the interior fontanelle. And so that's going to be in this region that's in the front here. 
And then there is one that is towards the back, right? And so this is the anterior and this is the anterior there. And the one that's towards the back here is the posterior fontanelle. And you can see that on 8.8. .8. So let's go to the very first part of what's known as the ethmoid bone. So for this, we are going to look at picture eight or figure 8.6. And so we're gonna take this top and remove it. We're gonna put this guy off to the side and this is the front and we're gonna look at the top of this skull. And so we are going to look at what is known as the ethnoid bone. Specifically, it is subdivided into two parts called the cribiform plate and the crystagala. So if you look up here where it is, get this in here, kind of this red area, and then in the middle of it, it kind of has this peak that comes up. So what we're doing here is this. The red part that's around it is the cribiform plate, and the part that peaks up, it looks like the little thing that's on a rooster. That is what's known as the Christagala. This whole thing with the two combined is the ethmoid bone. Now, if we keep this and we continue looking at this 8.6 figure, and then we look at this bone, you'll notice that the next thing that we're talking about is the cephnoid bone. And this yellow region that's up here, you can see it in here, across and in here, that is the cephnoid bone. It to me looks like a butterfly. And you don't need to know the difference between lesser wings and greater wings. I just want you to know the cephno bone in general. Now, in the middle of it, where the body of the butterfly would be, it, you can put your finger in there, and it feels like it looks like a little saddle. And the word for it is salaturcica, which translates into Turk saddle. And so it looks like a little person could essentially sit in there, and you can see I can put my finger in there, and there's a little spot open for it. So that's how I remember that. Again, you can see on 8.6, they show you the cellotorsica. Now, the second part of the ethnoid that we're going to do, what happens is that these bones are separate, and then as the skull continues to grow, these bones connect to each other. So you'll see that it's red in here, oops, right there. And then, essentially, if you look inside here, and you look into the back. This is the mouth, right? And so this is the very back where it connects. Basically, I can see through here. Um, you can see if I put this back here, I'm going to put it in here and it comes out on the other side. So this goes straight back. Okay. And so essentially what we have here is on the bottom of it, it kind of has this line that separates the nose from right to left. And the, there's kind of this area that has a notch in the middle. Like if this is the whole area that separates the nose, like right in the middle of it, there's going to be this notch. Below the notch is the vomer. Above it is a perpendicular plate. So as we go through this, this bottom part here where my finger is, is the vomer. The top part here and there is the perpendicular plate. Now you can see this really nicely on um, 8.3. So you can see on 8.3 that um, they have the vomer on the bottom, the perpendicular plate on the top, and then they have what looks like on the sides of the nose. You have rails here and rails down here. Now, I say they look like rails because if you've ever put a drawer into its slot, 
it rests on two rails on the sides that go back and forth, right? That are kind of lined down the um, opening that you put your drawer in. And the drawer just kind of rolls on top of it. That's what I think these side things look like. And so the ones that are on in the top of the nose are actually called the middle nasal concha. And the ones in the back are called the inferior nasal concha. And you might be asking yourself, well, there's a middle and superior. Why is the middle one not called superior? And there are a set of superior nasal conchas. You just can't see them. And when we get to the respiratory section um, in part two of this course, you're going to be able to see a cutout of them. And it does have the superior, the middle, and the inferior nasal conchas. But the only thing that we can see essentially are the middle in here and the inferior and essentially what they're there is as you breathe in um it's going to create turbulence because the air is going to hit it it's going to create turbulence so that if there's anything in the air itself like contaminants that it kind of mixes those up and allows them to displace on the side of the nose and the wall and the mucus now the nasal bone you can see as well and 8.3 is this area here and they have the two different colors for right and left but that whole thing is the nasal bone and so the next thing that we're going to look at again is and we looked at it one time is the vomer and I'm just going to reiterate this because there are two parts for this. Again, the vomer was down here and the perpendicular plate is here. But if you look here underneath, remember this is the front. So let's flip it over and look here. That orange part is the vomer. So the vomer continues back here. Like I said, this goes all the way through and comes out the nose. And it's this back part here. And it's the bottom part. On the nose so you can see the vomer and again 8.3 or the second view is 8.5 lacrimal bone you can see in um, 8.3 and it's basically this green area that's on the side here. And this is where you would see the tear ducts. So it's just right on the inside of the eye, right here where the inside of the nose is. And you can see it there in that green area. Now the palatine bone. can be seen on 8.5. And if you look at the bottom again, you can see that this, like the palate, think in the back of your mouth. And that is the palatine bone is right here, right? And this would relate to the hard palate. The soft palate is where the back of it um, is softer and you can see your uvula kind of hanging there. But before it gets to that, you get this hard palate palatine bone. Now in front of that, you can see this right here. And this is 8.5. But you can also see in an 8.4. And 8.3. This is a maxilla. So you can see this has this pink and it goes all the way up here. So it's this area that's here in your mouth, all the way under right behind your teeth. That whole thing is a maxilla. Now, you don't necessarily see it here because I don't have it, but I'm going to pull you up to this last part here for the skull. And you are going to see this guy, so the jaw here. So the jaw itself is the mandible. And then if you go sideways on it, you'll notice... And you can see the mandible on 
but I'm going to refer you now to 84, and you'll see that this right here is a mandibular angle, and the side that comes up is the mandibular ramus. Right? So, mandible, mandibular angle, mandibular ramus. And this angle right here can actually tell us the difference in ethnicities um, there, depending on how broad or how sharp that angle is. So, this is the skull, and I'm going to end this now, and you can reference to page two on a new video. Thanks, guys. Bye.